Are you winning, son? Welcome back, my name is OmniFlash, and in today's video, we will show you exactly how to beat Tempest Heart, the brand new five-man expedition in New World. It's gonna be so easy. Once I tell you all the mechanics you need to know about the two bosses, this video will cover the two main bosses. Now, the main boss is Isabella, okay? You're gonna have to beat her about four times. The last time, she grows wings and she is insane. Okay, that's the last boss. A lot of people cannot beat the snake boss and they think that the snake boss is the last boss. And that is how hard the snake boss normally is to most people. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I'm going to heal the snake boss. I'm going to show you how to deal with the snake boss, how to win versus the snake boss, what type of DPS you want what attacks to dodge, everything you need to know to beat both of the hardest bosses that AGS, Amazon Game Studios, has ever made. This is a beautiful dungeon, and I will make another video tomorrow showcasing the entire dungeon. Okay, to show you the entire dungeon, I've been playing this on the public test realm. You should check it out also. But today, I'm going to show you the mechanics of the amazing dungeon. Okay, these two bosses are so fun. You have to check them out. It is absolutely amazing. I'm going to show you how to beat them though. Okay, so the first big boss, the main mid boss is Nashaton. So most people have difficulties on this boss. What I have is I'm going to heal. Uh, Amazon Game Studios did not give me the best gear. I did have a sacred ring. I do have a sacred ring. I wish I had Hardy on it. I don't. I'm going to go in with my light build because of movement. I want to have good movement for this particular boss because there are a lot of circles and a lot of attacks that you need to dodge. Also, there are adds. With that extra movement, it will keep you alive. All right, I am actually going to be using the blunderbuss also, all right? Uh, if you are using a blunderbuss, you will put an amber gem in it. I, I did not do that because I normally DPS with it, but you will put an amber gem in the blunderbuss. You will get a focus or a constitution blunderbuss if you want to use that as your offhand. It's not terrific, but it does some really nice damage very quickly. That's what a blunderbuss it's it's decent for. We'll show you how to do it right now, okay? I do like to use sacred ground, lights embrace and beacon all of that can keep my team nice and healthy the lights and braces always up i can actually heal everyone with that <clears throat> all right so for the boss you see how there's little letters that comes out on the ground and then you know that is the center of the circles so it's just you have to you just have to picture how big those circles will be every time you see the letters picture where those circles will be and I think the circles are uh, they start out small then they then they get bigger and bigger and bigger all right, all right after a couple of times snake boss comes back up <clears throat> all right the snake boss is uh, always is aggroed on the tank you want to make sure that you don't want to stand behind the tank because if you do snake boss does like to do the somersault and the tail will hit you and knock you out the snake boss also see that tail again she does that a lot also she also attacks behind her she does a tail whip you see that tail whip so you see how far i'm standing if you're a healer this is where i normally stand uh, uh, you see, <clears throat> Die Bro PTR, he's a blunderbuss. Now, that's about the distance that you would stand if you're a blunderbuss. All right, so the second time when there's all of these circles, 
you want your full team to be in the same area, okay? You want to run together in the same area. Why? Because this way your healer can heal your team and your full team can DPS all of these ads, okay? These ads will keep coming. There's a brand new ad that spawns every three to five seconds. And if you're not able to kill them as soon as they spawn, you're going to be overwhelmed with the number of ads. Also, the boss will not wait for you to kill the ads. If you don't kill the ads, by the time the boss spawns, you're going to have to deal with the ads and the boss at the same time. <clears throat> if you have a guy down, but you also have this orb, what do you do? Do you pick up the guy? No, you kill this orb because you must destroy the orb or everyone gets this fire debuff and you just uh, you just get you just get fire damage massive fire damage all the time whenever you see the orb be sure to focus fire on the orb everybody now if you're a tank uh if you're close enough to it go ahead smash that orb a couple of times help your dps out but make sure that the snake boss isn't going to slam your dps okay so position yourself so not to make the snake boss body slam and kill all of your uh all of your dps so even even with the blunder bus i can deal some pretty nice damage onto uh the orb when it shows up all right so we do have a couple of people here and we have two on the other side so the other two they have to stay alive and I have two that we're staying a lot. Our team comp, in order for this to work, is a little different. We have we have a we have blunderbuss and I think great axe. One of my DPS is a life staff void gauntlet. Okay, the void gauntlet has an arcane gem in it, so he does pretty decent damage. So if your team is split up like that. The other two people aren't going to die because the Void Gauntlet Life Staff DPS can keep those two alive. I can keep the tank and one DPS alive. Even if we are split up during the ads, everyone stays alive. So for this dungeon, I do recommend a Void Life Staff user just so if somehow your team is split up during the ad phase, there's going to be a life staff close enough to heal the team. As long as you can kill the ads and keep your, all five of your members alive, you'll be able to kill the orbs fast enough. Because if you don't destroy the orbs fast enough, it's going to burn your whole team to the ground. All right. As a tank, you can be a traditional tank. You can use a hammer, a sword and shield. I've, I've actually tanked this as a sword and shield blunderbuss before. That works as well. You can use hatchet, sword and shield as a tank. Oh, one thing about this tank, he is using leadership because DPS is so important for this particular boss. You want to spec in the leadership so that as a tank, you'll be giving everyone 10% more attack damage so that you can burst down the circles, uh, the orbs, so that you can burst down the adds. Very, very important. And that, my friends, is how you beat the first boss, Nashaton. There is one more important thing, is that even if you do have melee, I do recommend your DPS. So, so we have one Void Life Staff, Another one is like Great Axe but Blunderbuss. Another one could be Bow and Spear. Alright, so the reason you want your melee weapons is because that is great for killing the adds. Your, your ranged weapon is great for killing Neshotan, the, the snake boss. Simply because if because of the range, you, do, you don't have to worry about the AOE circles, the small AOE circles that appears under Neshaton a lot. All right, so I was so far away, but even if you are a tank or if you are a melee DPS, be aware 
that underneath Neshutan, there's going to be spawning a bunch of small circles. Also, sometimes Neshutan will mark above your head a, a diamond-shaped symbol. When that happens, be sure to dodge and also to always move, run, always run sideways because he will shoot out a spike tail or something at you and that hurts that will probably one hit kill you okay that is all the mechanics for nation this will be how you beat the very last boss of heart tempest of tempest heart and that is isabella her final form her final form is magnificent amazon games did an amazing job she grows the most beautiful pairs of wings and her attacks are so fluid so beautiful however we will show you exactly how to beat her she is pretty tough all right very tough she will fly up she will jump on you she will swoop down on you like a gundam and you have to be prepared to dodge away she will also shoot out like corruption spikes that chase you it is very hard to dodge we will see how we will do this i just want to say that this is using the gear that amazon games gave us for uh just for the public testing okay so we have 585 gear i i did roll one piece of sacred ground for fortify sacred ground for my healing set but it was very hard to roll because we didn't have timeless shards so I didn't, I wasn't really, most of my gear probably just has one piece of refreshing. I have, I don't have health or divine on my amulet. Uh, I don't have hardy or nimble. So this is going to be tough. But if you are more geared, I, I'm assuming this dungeon will be easier. However, if you are like a fresh uh, 600 or you don't have any gear score this is what it's going to be like and you just don't have any gear this is going to be very tough my healing staff does not even have blessed it i th i have something like a keen speed uh healing staff that's what ags gave me but we made the most of it okay all right so you see on the ground all these black puddles the red puddles they actually hurt you and also these spikes, these corruption spikes that she shoots at you, they hurt a lot, okay? They hurt a ton. That's why I'm at maximum range. And you just, uh, oh, one more thing is for Isabella, for the last dungeon, you remember what I said that we had a void uh, life staff, a void gauntlet life staff DPS? The void gauntlet life staff DPS has changed has changed now for the last boss to full focus all right so normally normally a void gauntlet life staff will have mostly int for its damage right and only have maybe 150 to 200 focus right but for the last boss for isabella there isn't a massive, uh, you don't have a massive DPS check. For Isabella, there is no massive DPS check. So, the Magician PTR has changed to full healer. So, he is full focus. He is a full focus uh, healer set now. Just in case, just in case I die like this, right? Her void spikes do chase you. They chase pretty fast and it is kind of hard to avoid you have to do a lot of practicing all right so she jumped up when she jumps in the sky like that there is going to be a small thin circle on the ground and it's kind of hard to see where she's going to land i think ags is going to have to make that the her landing spot slightly shinier okay just like what they did uh with with genesis boss okay also with with Cecilia. All right, so you see, I had a triangle. I had this triangle mark that sh she put up above my head. That was the, the sign for me to dodge because she was going to charge at me. However, that did not give me all that much time to dodge. 
But it's okay. This is all part of the plan. All part of the plan. Because, because, this is another reason why having two healers is good. If you have a healer that goes down, if you have group mode on, if you go into your settings, go into gameplay, and you turn group mode on, you can actually heal your team from this window. But your team has to fight close enough to this window. Check this out. I can see the whole fight. And I can I can heal the whole fight without any damage. Nothing can hit me. However, I can still light embrace the team. And I can still sacred ground the team. Beacon does not go out of the window. But with group mode on, I can toss lights and brace as long as they are close enough to the window. And I can also put down sacred grounds, fortified sacred grounds, as long as they are coming close enough to the window so that I can lock onto them. All right, so as you can see, <laughs> Isabella's mad and she has these crazy wings, but she also summons these corruption totems okay these corruption totems you have to go up your team will have to aggro the tank will have to aggro and see i'm healing my tank my tank is taking tons of damage okay this is a strong tank he is a great tank but i think the amount of damage that that these bosses that isabella gives is slightly overtuned and it's just destroying our tank. If I'm not able to heal the boss, uh, to heal my tank through this window, there is no way that you can beat this boss. But as as my tank is keeping Isabella aggro away from the totems, you see havoc, havoc PTR was using his Azoth staff and he destroyed the corruption totem. And that's what you want to do. You have your DPS attacking Isabella. You have your tank tanking Isabella away from the totems. And you want to have one of your DPSs going up to a totem and using the Azoth staff to uh, to 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 take down the totem. Now you have to be careful Isabella shoots meteors at you a lot of meteors so you have to be dodging while you're using your Azoth staff on those totems and if you need a heal run towards the window and I can heal you I will give you sacred grounds and lights embrace now this is going to be a long fight It's going to take a while. However, there is no massive DPS checks. You just have to dodge. <laughs> she just sent out those corruption spikes that chased you. And then she's doing this. Look at that. Look at that. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Just like a Gundam. All right. She just shot up into the sky and then sh and, and jumped down. Now she comes up, summons another totem. Incredible, incredible new boss. I love this boss. If Amazon Games wants the general public, the general public to be able to beat Isabella, all they have to do is dial down Isabella's damage just a little bit. Okay? Make it so that Isabella's airstrikes don't one hit you. Okay? Maybe let the what let the airstrikes deal you know just enough damage to make you need a heal badly but not a one hit mechanic all right so uh, she going up again summoning another corrupted totem and so yeah you can you can continue continue to whittle down on her HP and uh, 
my tank is close enough to the window so I can heal him. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is basically what I do for the rest of the fight. It is basically, this is it, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Havoc died. However, we still have a tank, a DPS, and a Magician PTR, which is another, another healer. Well, Magician PTR is gone. We only have Die Bro PTR and Voice Mind Hoose. Wo voice, voice Mind Hoose. Vo vo voice Mind Hoose, the tank. And Voice Mind Hoose is going to be. Oh, that's it. Isabella, fools, my power is endless. Well, apparently your power just ran out, Isabella. I don't think your power is that endless. We just took you out. And Isabella tries tries to stay alive. Die bro saying, oh, well, Isabella's going to revive again and get even stronger, right? But good enough, AGS was not that sadistic, and uh, Isabella is defeated. Dibro is extremely excited and jumps on top of Isabella's body. And this, my friends, is victory. This is how you beat Tempest Heart. This is, the, this is how you beat both bosses. So very important, very fun, exciting. One of the best dungeons I've ever seen. I will post the whole dungeon run tomorrow. And I uh, hope you watch that also. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.